We're going to talk about my Ream Hybrid Heat Pump Water Heater problem number two. In February 2023, I began receiving the following alerts from my Ream Hybrid Hot Water Heater. Ream Hybrid Electric Water Heater Heat Pump Kicking Out, A004 Compressor Shutdown, Discharge Suction Trip. I was able to troubleshoot that problem with the help of a Ream technician. I published the following video on how I did it. I recommend you watch it for information on how to open up the water heater replace the thermistors. I also have information on how thermistors work. This is a link. I'll have a clickable link in the description and one in an end element at the end of this video. Now the water heater has not had any additional issues until April this year, 2024, when I began receiving this alert. Econet alert, A005 heat pump water heater, Gen 5 compressor shut down, discharge temperature high. Different problem than the earlier one. This video is about how I was able to troubleshoot this new problem with the help of another EAM technician. The technician taught me through reviewing the sensor codes and decided I had probably accidentally replaced the ambient thermistor instead of the evaporator thermistor during the original problem. I told her I was sure I had replaced it, and this video proves it. She sent me a new thermistor, and I installed it. This is what the uh, water heater looks like. If you, I highly recommend you watch my earlier video to see how to take that top off. Uh, there's about 10 screws you have to take off, but that's the best way to do this and look at that video. Anyway, what I remember the ream technician telling me to do is put the mode in heat pump. I had put it into electric because it was just shutting up, turning on and off. I didn't think it was good. So I put the mode in... I believe in heat pump. Let's see if I can find that mode. High demand heat pump mode. Okay. And leave it there for a while. Let it run. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the hot water over here in this utility sink I've got down here. So it'll run. And then what she had me do was push the mode button and the next button simultaneously to cycle through some sensor code information. We'll try to do that in just a minute. Let the heat pump run for a while. And you can see the thing from fan is on, it is running. Okay, running for a little while in heat pump mode. Now I'm gonna to try to push these buttons simultaneously. It's a little tricky doing that. Evaporator fan, I'm trying to get to the evaporator temperature. If you're going to try this, I recommend you talk to one of the technicians at Ream and have them talk you through how to do this. Because I just messed around and mm. by trial and error, I finally got to the evaporator temperature. But it's always possible you can mess something up doing this. So I don't think it's a good idea. I'm not going to try and tell you how I got there. But I'll just show you what it looked like. DT. Oh, there we go. ET. See, it's 114 evaporator temperature. She told me that was supposed to be below 50, I believe. 112. So that's apparently she says that evaporator thermistor is causing it to do that, making this thing shut down. So I'm going to replace that thermistor she gave me and we'll see what happens. Let's see if I can get out of this somehow. Let's just power this down. I'm going to shut it off anyway, replace that thermistor. Okay. I've got a disconnect up there. I'm going to just take the power off the unit by disconnecting that. Now this is what they sent me. It's interesting. This appears to be brass clad where the others were um, copper. The video sent me to say that that gray wire goes to the EVAP thermistor right there, not the yellow one. 
the gray one. So that's the one we're going to take off this time. I replaced it last time. When I talked to the technician, she said she did, She thought I'd probably change the ambient one. Not that, but I didn't. I changed that one too. Let's see. Very hard to do here. It's going up underneath that insulation. I, I did do it. See, I got black tape on it. Well, she didn't put black tape on it. Let me get that off. Get the insulation out of the way. Okay. See so if you can see it. There it is. See with the black the copper canister. Right there. Got to get that one off. Came right off. I got to get this out of here. We need a small screwdriver. Can't this in one hand. Okay. I had to go off camera, but I did was able to pull it out. There it is. So let me get the other one. First of all, before I put in the other one, I want to check this spot. I'm going to get something and clean that up a little bit. Is that tubing? There's different size tubing. I'm not sure I could tell in his video which one it went on, the small one or the big one. Let's see if I can find out. Look at this. This is brand new when I installed it. It's all corroded. That's why I'm going to put that Norlux on there. See if we can prevent that corrosion. See how this looks like copper. The new one looks like brass. Still, it's going on what looks like aluminum pipe. Not good. The uh, Norlux antioxidant joint compound I got from, I believe it was Lowe's. So, and here's the new clips they gave me. Actually, there's one bigger clip. This is the old clip. It's the same size as these right here. So that's probably what I'm gonna use. But I'm gonna put this no locks on there first. Try and avoid more of these corrosion problems. I think I'll wear nitrile gloves when I do this. Okay, I'm gonna put some of this all over that new thermistor. Okay, put it all over that. Get one of these little clips on there. Okay. Now I'm going to put some of this on that. And uh, we'll see what happens. See if I can get it in there. The instructional video doesn't show whether or not to put it on that larger diameter pipe. See the lower part down at the bottom. Or the smaller one that's connected to it. Thin line is really probably the same thing. So I'm going to probably put it on the smaller one based on the size of the clip here. But it's going to be impossible to, to video that while I'm doing it, most likely. We'll see.
You know what? It's loose on that small pipe. I got to have to put it on the bigger one, it looks like. Well, you can't see this, but that's what I can feel it with my fingers. Okay, snap tight on the bigger one. See that? This smaller pipe, it was loose on it, so I put it on the bigger one with that new clip they gave me. Okay, we'll plug it back in and get it all running and see how it works. Although I didn't show it in this video, I did put the insulation back in place and I used black electrical tape to hold it down. That, that does seem to work okay. Got the new thermocouple back in, put it in energy saver mode, and we'll see how it works. It's been uh, 10 days since I replaced that thermotuck couple and evaporator for the second time. And it hasn't given me any problem at all. I've been running in an energy saver mode with no issues, no kicking out or nothing. So that must have solved the problem. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we won't have any more problems, at least for a while.